Welcome back to the next part of building the Rick and Morty app series. We're going to continue building out the character detail view, particularly focusing on compositional collection view layouts. Do me a favor and drop a like down below before we jump into things. Share the series on LinkedIn, Twitter, any social you want to toss it onto. It means a lot. Let's continue with our code. So where we left off previously, we had a build error, which makes sense because we were not creating and returning this NS collection layout section thing. So we're going to actually do that today. And what I found is the easiest way to uh, exemplify what the heck this collection layout section thing is, is by showing an example. So I'm going to go ahead and create one of these uh, sections, these layout sections, and we're going to talk about it once we actually see something on screen. So we're going to say this needs to be created with a group, and this is of type NS collection layout group. So let's create a group. We're going to create it up above. We'll say a group is NS collection layout group, and we're going to say we want a vertical group. So we're going to have a vertical group with a layout size and sub items. Okay, makes sense. Now, for the sub item, looks like this takes a collection of a NS collection layout item. So I'm going to create an item up above and bear with me for this layout size thing in a moment. I'm going to actually just delete it for the time being. This item will be a NS collection uh, layout item. And this thing takes a layout size and or a supplementary items collection. I'm going to ignore that. We can just do the one with the layout size. Now this thing here is a NS collection layout size. And this is where things get interesting. You can specify a width and a height dimension. So this is actually an enum. There's four options here, estimated, absolute, fractional, uh, width, and height. Now this is interesting. We can specify a fixed width and height with absolute. You can specify a percentile based on the width of its container. This item goes inside of a group or you can do it with the height. So for example, if you want 100% of the screen's heights, you're gonna have to make your group the entire height of the screen, and each item inside it will be the exact same height as well. So I know it's confusing, so what I'm gonna do is just do an example here. So this will be fractional width, this one will be fractional height, and we're gonna do 1.0 for both of those. And respectively, we'll take this whole thing I'm going to stick it into this group, and what we're going to say is that the width will be 100%, and the height of each group is going to be, I don't know, let's do like 150. And then, of course, at the bottom, we want to actually return the section, and everything will be compiling now. So one thing that we still haven't done is if you give it a build and run, you'll see if you click into this, nothing is going to show up because we haven't actually... Um, ignoring all of these warnings, we haven't actually gone ahead and done two things. One, we forgot to add the translates auto resizing mask into constraints on here, onto our collection view, which we need to do. And two, we haven't assigned the data source or delegate for the collection view. So I remember in the previous video or previous parts, I should say, I showed how to make your view model the delegate and or data source. And for this screen, I want to show how to make the controller the delegate and or data source. Um, both approaches are theoretically correct, but I do want to at least paint the picture here so you guys have uh, more variety at your disposal. So we are going to extend the controller here. And what I'll go ahead and actually do is we're going to make this a UI collection view delegate, a UI collection view data source. Respectively, we want the minimum functions, which is let's do number of items. Let's go ahead and return 20. We'll do a hard coded example here and sell for item. We're going to say let's sell is going to be our collection view. DQ a reusable cell with the identifier of cell, which is what we've registered for our example. I'm going to set this guy's background color. We'll say system. Um, let's just do system maybe. Let's do, I don't know, system pink. Got to keep it fresh with the colors. Okay, so, and we're just going to return the cell down there. Let me go ahead and add a comment here as well for collection view. Now, we've conformed here, but how do we tell our view who the delegate and data source is? Well, I'm going to expose two properties on here. And what we are going to do is we are going to say weak var 
collection view. Well, we can do it this way. What I'm gonna actually do is perhaps a little simpler. I can actually go ahead and just publicize this collection view here and I can assign it directly onto this. Um, so let me actually do that. So we'll actually make this public and let's just get this working and later we can always clean up the API design. Now in our, whoops, this is not the correct view. We wanna go into the view controller. Over here in uh, view to load, towards the bottom here, we can actually say that the detail views collection view, its delegate will be self and its data source will be self. And now if you give a build and run, let's see what actually happens. And one thing I wanna actually do before I go to that screen is let me get rid of the obnoxious purple color we're using here. And let's make it our system background color. All right, we're gonna click into it and we see this gigantic, just like pink block. So how do we know we have 20 cells? Well, we definitely have 20 cells. And the reason I know that is because, well, I've done this before, but B, um, we're just seeing each cell basically the left to right and top to bottom, it's 120, and I don't actually see a cell separator. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is for each of these sections, I'm gonna go ahead and add some insets. So let's see how to add an inset. I believe it is a content inset. And you can set up NS direction edge insets. And let me go ahead and create this with a top, leading, bottom, and trailing. We'll do maybe, I don't know, we'll do zero from the top, zero on the left, 10 on the bottom and 10 on the right, rather zero on the right, which is trailing. And now you're gonna to start to see some separation between this. So let's see why we actually don't see it. Let me actually add this on the item. All right, let me go over here. I'll add item and we're adding its insets. And let's see, all right, so now we see it, okay. So here's the first cell, second cell, third, fourth, fifth, all the way down to 20. So this is a collection view, but for those of you how, who have done a little bit of iOS, you might be wondering, well, this looks like a table view. This is a list of cells. And herein lies the power of compositional layouts, right? You can basically bend these layouts in so many different crazy ways that it is absolutely like bonkers. So what I wanna do is I wanna have one section at the top here, which will have you know the character's image, and then perhaps we want to have a you know, collection, another section of cells, which will show some important information about that user. And then maybe I want a horizontal scrolling carousel of like cell looking cards, which will be the episodes. So that's exactly what we're gonna build. The beauty of this is we can specify a different section layout based on the index, right? So let's say we have three different uh, sections of data that we wanna visually show. The first one can have one layout, the second one can have a second layout, so on and so forth. Now, we don't wanna be just using the integer because that's gonna get absolutely insane. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to create some objects that will help us represent the various different types of sections. So we're gonna go into the detail view model and I'm gonna stick an enum in here and we're gonna have section types. The first section type is going to be the photo section. The second one is going to be information. And the third one is going to be episodes. And based on whatever sections that we have in here, we're gonna want to go ahead and do a different layout. So how do we actually get this into uh, our view where we're actually creating those layouts? Well, it's particularly simple. I'm gonna make this case iterable and we're gonna create on here a public constant called sections. And this is going to be our section type dot all cases. And make sure you use that lowercase all cases, which is the one that we actually want, even though I used the wrong one again. And let's see if I can find it. So we want to do all cases, beautiful, like so. I'm gonna put a comment here. And we're gonna use these section types in our view. So let's jump back to the view. And what we wanna do is we are going to say our sections, let's call it section types, is going to be our view model. And do we have a view model in here? Looks like we don't even have our view model in here. So what we wanna do is we need to pass the view model to our view. And what I'll do to do that is add a public function. We're gonna say configure 
with our view model. And that's going to be a RM character detail view view model. It was smart enough to pick it up, which is awesome. And we'll go ahead and actually just create this view model up here. By default, we are going to want it to be optional because we want to uh, assign to it whatever we pass in. You can also pass it in via the initializer, but I'm gonna do it this way. It's a little more common. And we'll do self.viewmodel is view model. And here, what we can actually go ahead and do is we know that we'll have a view model at this point, uh, presumably. Well, we actually don't know that. So if I, I take it back, we actually don't know if we have a view model at this point because we immediately create the collection view and it's gonna want this. So let's actually tweak this. We're gonna do this all live and in action so you guys get me totally unfiltered. So here we're gonna make this a constant and we're actually gonna change this initializer which is going to take in a frame as well as a view model. And what we'll do here is we'll say self.viewmodel will be view model. And let's see, we're passing in the frame. Now what we want to do back in our controller is we want to create this view with the appropriate view model. So we can't actually instantiate it like this. What we want to do is we want to create this in the constructor. So what I'll do here is I'll say, self.detailView will be our view with the frame, will be zero by default, and we'll pass in that view model. The reason we need that view model there, if we jump back here, is because we need to read off of the view model in the view the particular section. So we're gonna say, this will be all the sections, and now we can switch on section types given the particular uh, section index. So if we go in here, we're gonna have a section for the photo, we're gonna have a section for the information, and we're gonna have a section for episodes. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is further decompose this, this uh, function because it's getting a little wild. And we're gonna say private func create photo section layout. We'll paste that in here. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this a total of uh, three more times and perhaps later we'll move all this logic actually to the view model because um, this view is getting a little large and this is kind of businessy logic right it is view related but we don't really need this in here so let me go ahead and say create info section layout and finally episode section layout all right it's yelling at me because we need to call those here so we'll say create photo section layout create info section layout and create episode section layout and let's see what the problem now here is looks like we need a colon here that i am missing let's go ahead and bring that in and it looks like we are in good shape but one thing that i do want to do is in the controller we are going to go ahead and say for number of sections return view models return view model dot sections dot count. And each of these is going to have uh, 10 cells in them. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to visually just have some data to work with. I'm also gonna change the color based on uh, the section. So we're gonna say if the index path section is zero, do something. If it is uh, one do something else do something else and I'm just going to change the color here just to illustrate What these different layouts will look like and we're going to go through it a little quickly for time But we're going to explain everything along the way All right, let's build and run we should get a total of 30 cells where the colors vary whenever the uh, Section changes so we've got blue here. We've got pink here and what the heck am I missing? I am missing green because I forgot to change the section index. All right, pink, green, and blue. Let's go ahead and create these layouts. What we'll actually do is we'll start creating them in the next video. Since we got a bunch of setup stuff out of the way, we can just focus on the layouts. So drop a like before clicking to the next video, hit subscribe, share the series if you're into it and made it this far. Much appreciated. I'll see you in the next part.